student handbook, so if you cannot see it from where you're at, ask your student if you can look at their handbook because they do have a chart in there with all of our calculations. Um, if you fail a class, as you can see, you will receive no points for a failing grade. So here are two examples of a student who has, two students who have similar classes, but one has honors classes and one just took the regular classes. So if you look on your right, that student is in English 1 Honors, Algebra 1 Honors, Biology Honors, World History Honors, Health and Spanish 1, and Info Processing. Whereas your student on your left, they took all regular classes, uh, but they also took Health, Spanish 1, and Info Processing. As you can see, they all, well, they both earn the same grades, but because the student on your right took Honors classes, their points are a little higher because they were out of the five points, or they are out of the five point scale. So your English one honors, Algebra one honors, your student on your right, their overall GPA is a 4.14, whereas the student who earned the same grades but in the regular classes, it's a 3.57. Now, how do you calculate GPA? Well, you look at what their grade was, like they earned an A in the regular English one class, so that's four points. The English one honors, they earned an A, so that's five points. So you add everything up, and then you divide it by seven, and that will give you their GPA. Class rank. Now, when we calculate class rank, we take all of the students in order of their GPA, and we rank them highest to lowest. There can be ties in our GPA, and we will determine a percentile rank. So currently, we have 314 students in the freshman class. If they were 31st, they'd be in the top 10% of their class. If they are 75th in their class, for example, they'd be considered the top quarter of their class. So after this first semester is completed, your student will have their first you know, GPA and their first class rank. And that will be updated at the completion of each semester. So it will change. Now, we're only freshmen. But how, so how important really are grades? Well, they are going to be, grades are looked at for awards and scholarships. So our honor roll at LP would be a 2.75 or higher. If your student has a 2.75 and higher, they would be on our honor roll. Now our high scholarship legion would be a 3.30 or higher. Uh, when you are a senior, you know, students will be considered for the LP Honor Society. Again, GPA will be looked at, grades will be looked at, as well as a variety of other things. Uh, other scholarships that students would apply to, whether it be an LP scholarship or when they apply, if they go to IBCC, Northern, ISU, any scholarship will have a GPA requirement, or at least most will if it is tied to college. One big thing, if you are an athlete, we do have eligibility. Students must be passing five classes. Uh, if they are not passing five classes, they will not be able to play in the game. Now, if they have, are failing one class, they would be on athletic probation. They can still play, but we are going to be monitoring them and watching them. Also, college admissions are going to be looking at the whole picture. They're going to see your students' transcript with grades, freshmen, sophomore and junior year by the time they apply, and then senior year, again, they'll have to send their transcripts so that the colleges can see all of their grades. Something new this year is that grade level is determined by credits earned. So if you have a student who was here previously, that has changed. Um, so student grade level is determined by total credits. So for example, right now everyone is considered a freshman. However, when they, in order for them to become a sophomore, or to be classified as sophomore here at LP, they'll have to have earned at least four credits. That would mean that they would have to pass, you know, if they pass English one, first semester, and second semester, that would give them two credits. But they have to have a minimum of four credits. Junior year, they have to have a minimum of 18 credits, and to be considered a senior, they'd have to be, have a minimum of 32 credits. 
And how we decided that this is the case, or that these would be the numbers they would need, is because in order to be on track for graduation, in order to guarantee that they would be able to graduate in May of their, with their class, this would be how many they'd have to earn each year. Now, benefits to this change. As a parent and as a student, you now know your current graduation status. You know how much closer you are to walking that graduation stage. It provides motivation to stay on track. There's also natural incentives that are tied to being considered a junior or being considered a senior. For example, registration. You want to get those foods classes that, or the classes that fill up the quickest. If you are considered a senior, you're going to get that before somebody who's a sophomore. If you want to take the two-hour ACC courses, you have to be considered a junior or a senior. Prom, you have to be a senior unless you're invited by a senior, another senior, but you have to be a senior in order to go. Now, how high school counts. I'm giving you a lot of information. When you start applying to colleges, which we already talked to seniors today, uh, they're going to start applying around the 1st of September. We're going to be sending transcripts to the college they apply to. When we send a transcript, they are only going to see the first three years of college, freshman, sophomore, and junior year, 66% of your high school career. They are going to see what you've done senior year. Not yet, because you haven't completed it. So what they are going to look at is how you performed as a freshman, how you performed as a sophomore, how you performed as a junior, what your GPA is, what your class rank is with all three of those years. They aren't going to see your senior year yet. So make sure you start strong. One of our incentive programs is something near and dear to me, Renaissance. Um, I'm one of the coordinators for Renaissance, and if you don't know what that is, it's a nationally recognized program. And what we do is we encourage, we motivate our students to strive for academic excellence, uh, to you know, lessen their discipline referrals to improve attendance. And we've been successful. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Renaissance Cards. When we started this program 11 years ago now, we started with Renaissance Cards and only about 40% of our student body met this criteria to earn a card. I can now proudly say we are over 70%. Now, there are different types of cards you can earn. For example, a gold card, that is the Cadillac of our cards, that's the one that everyone strives for. So that would be a 3.30 or higher, you have no discipline referrals and only one or less discipline, or excuse me, absences, sorry. Um, we go all the way down to a red card, and that would be just simply your GPA has increased by 0.5 or higher from the previous semester. So your students may earn a gold, silver, or bronze card um, this first semester, they would, and we would look at that in January before we would give them their card and determine that. All right, checking grades. So PowerSchool is a great resource. There's a parent portal on the LP website. It's updated regularly by teachers. Uh, you can have both parent and student logins, so you can check that out. You can log in and see if your student has missed an assignment. We will mail home uh, grade reports every nine weeks, and then the semester, at the end of the semester, we will mail home final grades. And with that, I am going to hand it over to Mr. Duffy. So I'm going to talk about some of the ways that we support your students while they are here at LP, as well as some of the uh, programs we have in place for developing and planning for their futures. We'll start with support. Uh, first of all, this is our contact information for all the counselors. Um, and what I would say about this is uh, please don't ever hesitate to contact any one of us if you feel like we might be able to help in any way with your student if they're having any kind of issue, be it academic, be it uh, something personal to them. Uh, or even if they're just looking for more information about what they do after high school. Uh, that's why we're here, and that's we, we get excited when we get a chance to work with students in any of those capacities. Uh, we have a breakdown by Alpha Slice 
uh, here in the uh, right hand column. So if you kind of find your last name, uh, where it would fall alphabetically, that will tell you which counselor you will be working with and your son or daughter will work with one counselor for all four years. Uh, we have our email addresses and our telephone extensions. I'd say probably the best way to get a hold of us is an email. We check our email a lot during the day. But if it's anything more immediate, of course, you can always call our extensions and then get a hold of us uh, more quickly. So, the other main uh, methods of support available to your students, their teachers are there to help them in any way they can. All teachers are contracted to be here before school and after school. Uh, and they're available to help students during those times. Uh, we offer tutoring. Now, right now, the specific dates and times that we're going to be able to offer tutoring are not available. We're waiting until we get some more information on our budget from the fine congressmen and women of the state of Illinois. But once we have that, we will publicize that to you and your students. Uh, we always give freshmen a list of academic resources available to them. Uh, including uh, our labs, our tech labs, our English labs, our math labs, which are before, after, and during school. Uh, tutoring, which is also available for free through Illinois Valley Community College. And we have that, uh, those dates and times available, which we'll share with students as well. Uh, if your son or daughter is an athlete, or if they will be in one of the uh, three seasons this year, uh, should their grades begin to slip, they will be given academic vouchers. So that's one more way that we uh, are a little more hands-on with athletes and make sure that they're keeping their grades up because we know that they're spending more time outside of the classroom uh, practicing and going to games and on buses. So it's one more uh, support we have in place for those students. And then lastly, outside of academics, we offer group counseling. Uh, these are group sessions that are run by the LP counselors, and these are the topics that we've covered over the last several years. Uh, we do have a study skills group, which we offer to students that we think would benefit from learning some more hands-on study skills. Uh, we have a substance use group for uh, at-risk students or students that uh, are in need of it. And we also offer a grief group and an empowerment group, and I would just want to say that if any of those sounded like something, like if a bell rang when I said that, that you think that your student might benefit from uh, participating in a group for any one of those topics, see us after the presentation. We'd love to know if we can help your student in any of those areas. So these are our math labs, and math can be the scariest part of the day for some students and some parents. And I hear a lot that you know, as a parent, there's a concern because they may now be at a point where, specifically in math, you may feel like you can't help them anymore, that the content may be a little uh, past what you recall from when you were in school, and that's okay. We don't expect you to go home and teach them algebra. That's why we offer these math labs. So, uh, this is a sheet of paper that we give to freshmen, and if they have a study hall, it's easy because they can go to the hour that they have their study hall and they can find which teacher has a math lab that hour where they can get extra support. And if not, we do have a morning math lab with Mr. McKeever. We do have an afternoon math lab with Mr. Burgess two days a week. There's always some time available for students to get uh, help in math in a more a smaller setting, not a large classroom. So definitely, if you're already hearing uh, some complaints from students regarding math, maybe file away this, this note that they do have support available to them. And as far as planning for students' futures, we do a lot of fun activities with career exploration. Uh, we use a program called Career Cruising. Career Cruising is great because you can access it anytime. Same things that we do with students, uh, you can do at home. You, your students can log into their plans and they can go through activities that they've done at home. And it's something that they can use all four years that they are here at LP. We do our first career cruising activity with the freshmen in October. It's a fun one, it's an interest inventory, and we ask about the things that they like to do. Uh, we also work on creating four-year academic plans for them before it's time for them to take their sophomore year classes. That'll be done in their health class uh, sometime in December or January. We do a career research paper in their English 2 class for sophomores. 
we will be holding our career fair, which they will be interested, uh, which they will be invited to their sophomore year. We invite in dozens upon dozens of representatives from our community that share their experience and their careers and ask and answer questions to any interested students. And then of course individual appointments. If, if a student is uh, looking for more information about a certain topic or a certain career, uh, we're always happy to meet with them and discuss that with them. What can you as a parent do? Well, you may hear some things with it as far as what their plans are after high school that uh, well, like, once in a while it may be unrealistic. You know, we would always tell you just to stay positive, uh, you know, focus on their, their grades and their success and making sure that they're doing everything they can to achieve whatever their dream is, be it a professional YouTube star or uh, brain surgeon. You both of those I hear make the same amount of money. So whatever they're interested in, you know, we're here to support them and we're here to lead them down the best path for them at some point. Uh, encourage information gathering if they're interested in something. Have them look it up, find out how, how many jobs are there out there for you, uh, how easy is it to get those jobs. So that way we're making sure that they're making informed choices. Uh, take advantage of any opportunities they might have if they get a chance to experience something firsthand. That would be an invaluable opportunity. Uh, give them guidance, give them encouragement, as I'm sure that you always do. And make sure that they're setting goals for themselves. Even as freshmen, they are. Uh, Ample opportunities for them to set goals for their grade point average, for the amount of credits that they want, for the classes that they want to take in the future, for the experiences that they want to achieve. We we'll share some websites of interest for you that we will also uh, share with students. The first is career cruising. If that sounded like fun, if you want to go home and take an uh, interest inventory to find out what you want to be when you grow up, that's careercruising.com. I still play around that website on the regular. It's pretty fun. Uh, some other uh, websites I'd like to highlight, the Illinois Student Assistance Commission has a treasure trove of information related to careers and salaries and job prospects uh, related to Illinois. It's whatsnextillinois.org, another great resource. There is also the Occupational Outlook Handbook and the Occupational Information Network, or ONET, and those are some good bedtime reading if you're really, really into careers and jobs. So new this year, so a new program that we will have for the freshman class of 2021 is our SPARK program, and I'm excited about it. The SPARK program stands for, I want to make sure I get this right, because it's new. But it's geared towards students exploring careers through research and experience, and it is going to be a four-year program that is geared toward allowing students to explore career opportunities that are available to them after graduation right here in the Illinois Valley community. And we're really looking to connect them with career pathways that they have available to them. We're trying to make sure that our uh, fine students see what the community has to offer as far as employment. Uh, this is a joint venture between us at LP and the Illinois Valley Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm very pleased I want to draw attention to Ms. Joni Hunt, who is the Executive Director of IVEC. She's here tonight. And she's up here with a sign-up sheet for our SPARC program because we're, well, right now we're thinking we're only going to be opening this to 30 freshmen, and we wanted to give you the first chance to sign up tonight. If this sounds like something that your student might be interested in, Please come see uh, Joni or I after this presentation. We'd love to get you more information. Um, the program is going to be very fun because we anticipate that they will have chances to get out and have community field experiences and even lead them to possible internships by the time they get to their senior year. So as far as college and career planning, what can we do as freshmen? Well, first of all, I want you to see that the difference between the bare minimum high school graduation requirements and what colleges are expecting to see from their applicants, it is different. Uh, English, everyone will have to have four years to graduate, and that's what colleges expect. But as far as math goes, while we require three years to graduate, many colleges are going to expect a college-bound high school student to have four years of math. And it might be good for students to know that now if that's their plan, if that's their future. Same with science, same with social science, they're looking for somewhere between three and four years, depending on the college major that they wish to pursue. 
And then one more important note to highlight for students that are really seriously considering going right to a four-year college university, we like to advise them to think about taking a foreign language because there are schools that require it for admission. And if a student isn't positive right now where they want to go, we want to try and prepare them for all avenues. So because a college may have a foreign language requirement, we may like to recommend a minimum of two years of foreign language students, which we may have done when they were registering for classes for this year. And if we haven't, we will when they register for their sophomore year classes. If they are interested in pathways in career and technical education, we have a wealth of opportunities for them. In grades 9 and 10, they can take a class called Introduction to Technology, where they see all five of our CTE sections. Can I name them off the top of my head? Let's find out. Welding, machine skills, woods, electricity, and drafting, go mate. They can see everything. They get, week, they get five to six weeks of all of those sections. And then when they are sophomores through seniors, they can take a one-year focused semester class in any of those courses. If uh, their schedule allows, by the time they are juniors or seniors, they can sign up for classes through our Area Career Center. Area Career Center classes run for the whole year, and they are two hours long. And they are focused on getting students uh, some kind of starter certification, some kind of starter credit to certify them to actually do the job that they want to do, be it welding, be it health occupations, be it uh, computer automated drafting. And those are all available, more information on our website and our program of study. But once students start to develop those interests in freshman and sophomore year, then we lead them in those directions. And this is our philosophy. This is our philosophy of students and also to use their parents. You know, students have to go to high school. It's something they have to do. So they might as well make it count. They might as well get the absolute most out of their experience. And whatever they decide to do after their four years here at LP is done, we want to make sure that they have every opportunity available to them. We want to make sure that they know that what they do now directly affects their future. So no matter what that is, we want them to start thinking about life after these four years, life after high school, expect good things for themselves, expect success in the future, and to keep their options open by giving it their best effort in all areas. I will pass it over to Mrs. Mike Walsh. Thank you. So you're all here, you probably wonder, what can I do as a parent? So there are some keys to success for parents as well. The first thing we want you to do is to make sure that your students have the necessary materials that they need. And this will vary by class. You might even get something sent home by the teacher saying what's needed for class, whether it be notebooks, folders, binders, poster board markers, or note cards. If for some reason you can't get those materials, have your student come see us and we can try our best to get them for, for you. However, being a parent of three students, I know that they will come to you on Sunday night at 9 o'clock and say, I need a poster board for tomorrow. So Walmart is open, just so you know. <laughs> Every student has an LP planner. Ask your student to look at that every once in a while. Make sure they're kind of keeping notes in there. What's going on? When do I have homework due? They should be bringing that home every night. Encourage them to do that so you can look at it together. Monitor their homework and study habits. I'm going to guarantee you they will have homework every night. If they say they don't, I question that because they're all in a math class. And usually math has homework every night. Now if somebody has a study hall, chances are they could get it done, but I would question that too. Also, the key is to be involved. And just by you being here shows me and our department that you are the parents that will be involved. So kudos to you all. Give yourself a round of applause. Yay. And then also keep checking that power school because students know what's on there and sometimes they don't want you to see what's on there. So, <laughs> And don't say, yeah, mom. They'll come home, yeah, mom. I got an A on that test. And you're like, OK. So you check it and it's a D. <laughs> but one thing that's important as freshmen, we want you to observe their behavior because this is a time of a lot of social exploration and growth. They could be coming from a really small group of friends at, in junior high to this huge place where we have over 300 students in their class. So ask them about that. They're going to be making new friends. They're going to be joining new clubs, organizations, teams. 
So you want to ask who, what, when, where, how, and they'll probably say, quit nagging me, mom. But really, then you say, would you rather have me not care at all? And their answer would be no. They, will, they want you to care. Be part aware of their participation in social media, how it is used, how often it is used. If they're going to bed with their phone by their head, that's not a good thing. Number one, it, it hurts their sleep patterns, and they're up all night, and they're, they could be doing some things that they shouldn't be doing on social media. Um, we do have issues, so sometimes there's negativity. Freshmen and students are mean. They don't know better. Um, there's some conflicts and there's some bullying going on, which I'll talk about a little more in a minute. So what we want you to do is to encourage your student to get involved so they don't have time to do the not-so-positive behaviors. So how do we get involved? Or first of all, why get involved? First of all, you develop friendships. So if you are coming from a small school and you don't have a large group of friends, the more you get involved, the better because you start meeting new people who have similar interests. It also affects your social skills. You learn how to talk to other people. You learn how to be leaders. Reality, too, it also affects your productivity because research shows if you're involved in something, you can actually keep better time management because you know you have to. You know, you don't have all night. I have all night to do my homework, and then at 10 o'clock you fall asleep. So if you're involved in a sport or a club, well, I know I have a meeting from 7 to 8, so I have to get my stuff done before or after. It also, getting involved helps build character. You learn responsibility. You learn self-respect. You learn how to treat others. You learn leadership skills. And by being involved, you can also get, you earn a talent, or you can gain some recognition. We had students um, in the Renaissance program this year. We had a student receive a $10,000 scholarship, the first one. It's only one in the nation because of her involvement in Renaissance. So that leads to a lot of positive things and could help you, especially if it's money involved. Um, also, for college admission and scholarships, they're not looking at only at grades. They're looking at involvement and leadership roles and Anything that you can do, the better. They're looking at community, if you're out in the community working for the church, anything. So how to get involved? We do have sports here. We have several sports. We have the organized sports, football, basketball, softball, volleyball. But we also have intramurals, and those will be on announcements where kids can get together a group of friends and play dodgeball or play wiffle ball. That's usually very exciting. The, kids, the teens dress up in costumes, and they have a great time. Also, we have the LP super fans. So if you don't want to play sports, we encourage you to be a spectator sport. Get their red and green out and encourage them to go to football games. The first freshman football game is just awesome. On the clubs and organizations, we do have the school sponsor. There is a list on the website, or if you can't find that, just call one of us. And then we also have, there's outside opportunities, perhaps like the Boy Scouts, 4-H, Junior Achievement. And then we do have a Cavalier Cord program, and that rewards community service. So if you do think, if your student does things like work for the church or babysit or anything for the community, they can get points for that, and so many points for, for different colored cords. That is all in the student handbook. And then too, we also can get involved by having a job, and that's another way to learn skills, meet friends, you do have to, if you're under 16, you have to have a work permit to work at, in Illinois. You can get that in the counseling department. Once the student has a job, they need to see Mrs. Wilson, and she'll have the parent needs to come in and sign a paper, and that gets the ball rolling. I also wanted to talk a little bit about testing, because we are going to be doing some testing um, throughout the years that they're here, and you do have a handout on that. We do, our, we're now at SAT school. Um, State of Illinois switched from ACT to SAT last year. Um, so we do have the SAT suite of assessments. So they're designed to measure essential ingredients for college and career readiness and, and success. Um, they want to have a stronger connection to classroom learning and they inspire productive practice. So as far as the testing schedule, freshmen will be taking what's called the PSAT 89, which they did take that last year on a Saturday. This year they're going to take it on Tuesday, April 10th. As sophomores, they'll take the PSAT 10. Um, and juniors, they could take the PSAT slash NMSQT in the fall. 
and then which is a great practice for the SAT, which is what juniors take in the spring, and that is the, the test that they look for for college admissions. Bullying. Yes, bullying does exist here at our school. So what do you do if your child is being bullied? First of all, focus on your child. Be supportive and gather information. Just don't say, oh, tough it up. Find out really what's going on. Contact the child's teacher if, that's, if the bullying is happening in classroom, or the dean of students, or administration, <laughs> or any of the counselors. That could be the first thing that you'd want to talk to. We also have on our website, we have a, on the home page, we have a little icon that says report bullying. You can click on that and report it that way anonymously. Um, we, can also kept, we also take anonymous reports by phone call or in writing. And you can help your child become more resilient to bullying. There is a handout on the back of one of your sheets on, about how that can be addressed. And also, like I said before, be aware of your child's social media use. Okay, that's really all we have for tonight. Um, we update our web page a lot. We will actually put this PowerPoint on our web page. If you go to the counseling, it's under academics, counseling, and then there's several links to that. And we are going to be here. Anybody have any general questions or if you want to come and see each one of us individually? Anybody have any general? Yes. What time are the teachers here in the morning? The teachers? are contracted to be here by 7.30, by 7.30. Okay. Counselors are usually here about 7.15. You often find a lot of teachers here that are parked by 7.15. Yeah, we, we come here early now because we want the good parking space. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to help your kids. Yeah. And they are here at the minimum till 3.10. However, most teachers will stay later, especially if they know a student is coming in like the day before and they would say, can you, can tomorrow, can you help me? They would, they'd stay later. Okay. So just check. see if I need to get in contact with one of them. So about 7.15? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. 7.15, 7.15. And teachers do have prep periods. So if they can't get back to you right away, a lot of times they can call during their prep period. So if you do call and leave a message, just kind of put down when you're available, because they might be able to get to you. Like you can say, well, I'm working till two. If you can call me after then, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Kind of on the same note for after school. Like if they have to stay after school and see like a teacher or go to the math labs or do any other activity, what's the latest that they can have access to the school? What's the, what's the latest they can have access to the school? Well, I mean, you have staff here that will sometimes stay much later than that. The building is, is technically open until 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. I mean, we're not going to people that, that, that late in terms of extra help. Um, but the, the, building, the building is open um, much later than 2, 40 or 3, 10 when back when start to leave. A lot of students are in the new cafeteria like down by the locker rooms and that's they sit and they wait for rides and they do homework there and they, or they wait for coaches or other people or brothers and sisters so that's usually after hours if they're not in the lab that's usually the hub and those doors are open more because we have people practicing all the time and in the winter when we have our indoor sports there's people in the gym till probably nine o'clock Yes. Why did you steer, steer clear from the ACT versus the SAT? That was a state of Illinois decision. So we followed them. They told us. <laughs> our college is following the same too, so you don't have to like we don't have to worry about trying to get our kids to get an ACT for No, colleges have always taken the ACT or SAT. It's just that we've always been an ACT state and now our SAT. You know, like our current juniors, we're encouraging them, our, our current seniors, to take both because just to see which one they would do better on. And you can take both if you want. There's a cost to the ACT where the SAT is going to be provided free. But, you know. Anything else? Okay, well, if you have any questions, you will be here for a while. And then if you want to sign up for the SPARK program, Joni, sorry, Joni is right here. If you have any questions, please come up. We'd love to answer them.